Welcome to Chris's Storytelling Corner. This is Christopher Moldon. Today, I'm going to do a reading of Homesickness, pages 7 to 10. Be sure to also check out my manga review for Dawn of the Arcana, volumes 4 to 6, and uh, my movie review for The Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. Next week, I'll have a manga review for Dawn of the Arcana, Volume 7 to 9, and a reading of Homesickness, pages 11 to 15, which will end the uh, short story. You can check out my author's website at www.chrismaldon.com. You can buy my first novel, a fantasy adventure called The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom for $4.99. Also for $2.99 you can buy my short story collection, a collection of 10 short stories and a horror, fantasy, and realistic fiction genres. This story is in that collection. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube. Or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. So, um, we're just going to pick up where we left off. So, uh, let's continue on with homesickness. Don't you think it's a masterpiece? You better say it is, she says to a stunned Clive. Is something wrong? Have you ever talked to a girl before? Words finally come out of his mouth. Yeah, you know, I've talked to some girls, like my mom. She looks at him in disbelief. Did you need permission from your mommy to go play today? She says patronizingly. Uh, not really. She's off on a trip, but she's always hounding me to study, he says to her while looking down at the asphalt floor. Yeah, I hate sitting around and reading some dumb textbook all day. Smell this fresh ocean air. I have to be out here. Clive smells the air but only gets a whiff of spray can fumes. You're funny. What's your name? Uh, I'm Clive. Clive Hollow Oak. Well, Clive Clive Hollow Oak, I'm Catherine Free Rebel. Everyone calls me Cat. Oh, so, what are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? I'm some bad girl that's tagging this wall. You know, the ones that your mom probably told you to stay away from, she says with obvious sarcasm. Okay, he responds without knowing what else to say and totally missing the sarcasm. Clive looks at her brown eyes and starts to step backwards. I can't actually let you leave now that you've seen me vandalize the place. I guess I got no choice. Here, catch, she says as she tosses the spray can to him. Your fingerprints are on that thing now, so you might as well put your touches to this museum-quality masterpiece. Clive looks at the black spray can, and then at Cat. He then says jokingly, uh, I don't really like this color. He puts it down. Well, I don't have any pink spray cans on me at the moment. Nothing wrong with pink. It goes with this sunflower woman thing that's on here. Cat laughs with an almost childlike innocence. Uh, I knew there was a personality somewhere in there. So what are you doing here anyways? Shoot! I'm supposed to check out this movie. Clive checks the time on his cell phone. Yup, it's halfway over already. Sorry, um, can you check out, check it out tomorrow or something? Why don't we just hang out instead? I guess we can do that. What do you want to do? You're my partner in crime, but you haven't done anything yet. Clive looks at the spray can and picks it up. He examines the picture carefully, then sprays zigzags below its nose where the face is supposed to be. So, if it's a lady, then she's got a mustache. If it's a sunflower, then it's in water or something. <laughs> we'll leave this painting here for all to see our glory. Right now, though, I know a place to get some inspiration. After throwing the spray can in the dumpster, they walk along the sidewalk. As it gets closer to night, empty streets and sidewalks can be seen for miles as if the residents have been abducted. This is kind of spooky. Where did everyone go? Clive asks. The ghosts got them. They always come out when the sun's gone and takes everyone back to their homes. Wait, are you serious? Yes and no. I mean, there are no real ghosts. 
well, none that I know of from here. But the ghost of sleep always comes by to pick up the residents. Everyone's pretty old, and there's really not much for them to do at night, so they just go home around this time to sleep. Or maybe watch a little TV, then sleep. They reach a small building at the corner of a plaza with the lights still on. Seeing through the windows, pictures and photographs line the walls. Plaques of the artists or pho photographers sit on the stands, giving a brief overview of their work. Is this place still open? Clive asks. Yeah, don't tell anyone, but the owner sleeps here. They go inside, and an old man who appears to be in his 60s or 70s sits at the front desk. Seeing the two, he lifts himself up out of his chair and approaches them. Readjusting his glasses, he examines Clive to his obvious discomfort. Is this your friend, Cat? He says in a partly shrill voice. Yeah, I, I guess you could call us friends. His name's Clive Clive Hollow Oak, she says with a mischievous smile while looking at Clive. Well, Clive... I'm the owner of this fine establishment. My name is John Barker. Call me old-fashioned, but I'd appreciate it if you young people referred to me as Mr. Barker. No funny nicknames, either. Uh, hi, Clive says. Not much of a talker, is he? Mr. Parker asks Kent. It'll take a while, but he'll open up eventually. Well, you probably know this place better than I do, so look around, but don't touch anything. As they walk around and observe the exhibits, Clive notices something. Is it just me, or are most of these displays photographs? Clive asks. Yeah, it's not just that, but most of the photos are local, and a lot of the photographers are locals as well. They continue walking through the seemingly endless amount of rooms. This place is actually pretty huge. I couldn't tell from the outside, Clive says. Yeah, this was actually just one shop converted into a museum. Somewhere along the way, Mr. Barker brought the two shops next to him, and now it's this hidden treasure of the town. They continue looking through the, uh, the photographs, and Clive closely examines one. This beach is from a war movie that I've seen. That's the beach from this town. We should go there one of these days. How about tomorrow? Then you want to watch that movie you missed? I'll watch it with you since I kind of owe it to you. you want to watch a French film with me? Are you even used to reading subtitles? Clive asks, legitimately perplexed that someone other than him would want to watch a foreign film. Hey, I'm not illiterate. I can speak and read English, she says up frivolously. They leave the museum and stand around outside. So, French movie tomorrow night, right? Ken asks. Okay, uh, can I get your number? He asks her while trying to act aloof. She tells him her number, and he now has someone else's number besides his immediate family in his phone. So, that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to the channel if you're on YouTube, or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. Thank you for listening to this reading. Next week, I will review Dawn of the Arcana, Volumes 7 to 9, and have a story reading of Homesickness, pages 11 to 15, and finish up this short story. Thank you, and until next time.